Hello and welcome everyone. Very excited to be here today having this webinar. Um, my name is Michael, I'm CTO here at the Tego and I'm very happy to have my colleague next to me, Simon. Welcome to this webinar. What we are going to talk about today is a topic that is very relevant for most retailers out there. And indeed, it's more than just pretty. We will be talking about planograms and how AI-driven and data-driven planograms can help retailers to be more successful. And Simon is a data scientist in, at the Tego, and he is kind of a key person to develop the datagram, the planogram in a data-driven way. And we will be covering what our software delivers um, with respect to generating and maintaining planograms. And we'll be covering how this relates to an RFID-driven stock management. And so let's get started. Um, before getting into the details on what are planograms, why do they make sense? Um, let's back up a little bit and let's first speak about what are the basics in order to achieve that. So in general, the goal is to boost product availability. And there are several tools out there and an RFID driven stock management is definitely the go-to tool in order to do an efficient and accurate stock take on a periodic basis and to perform an in-store replenishment, the classical back of house to sales floor replenishment. So with an RFID driven system, you can basically see at each moment in time, where are my products in the store and what's the percentage of yeah, products that you can actually represent on your sales floor so that the customer can see it, can try them on and can buy, can buy them. And if we put that in numbers, then I think the statistics are quite well known. So when you look in, in the fashion industry, the average stock accuracy, meaning what's the percentage of correct information in my backend systems compared to physical reality um, currently is about yeah 70 75 percent and values are even worse for the product availability on the sales floor and what we have seen consistently out there for all our customers who have successfully implemented an rfid driven stock management is that we can boost these values very very close to 100 percent so by means of that, we basically tick the boxes so we know what stuff we have and we know what stuff is on the sales floor. Um, in order to quantify that, so the question of course is, is arising, um, how do you actually quantify product availability? And now it's getting a little bit yeah, more technical, but I think the intuitive interpretation of the definition um, is actually also quite easy. So availability is simply um, the number of SKUs that you represent on the sales floor divided by the overall number of SKUs that you have available in the store. And this gives a kind of an indication of, so what is the share of products that I do represent on the sales floor? Um, however, it has a certain shortcoming in the sense that it's only an operational metric. So basically you measure how good is the store in putting products that are in the back of house to the sales floor. And this is very easy and very efficient to measure using an RFID system. And also the RFID system can help you to actually execute this replenishment by relocating products in the different zones in your store. So that's maybe a little bit of a shortcoming. So basically it does not really quantify um, if the actual distribution of products across all your stores is ideal in the sense that it fulfills the customer demand in the optimal way. And for this purpose, we have defined yeah, an additional metric to, to cover this aspect that we call the planogram compliance. And, and Simon can give us a little bit more insight in, into that. Exactly. So <clears throat> the planogram compliance uh, tells us a little bit more about the actual distribution of the different products. And it simply is the ratio of the SKUs represented on the sales floor and the SKUs in the planogram. Okay, so when we speak about planogram, I think there's one thing that, that we need to clarify. What do we actually mean by planogram? And whenever I speak to customers, most often the idea is that a planogram is that. So it is kind of the visual representation of what product should be put where. And yes, there is this element. Um, but in our definition, a planogram is not just that. So absolutely, there's a great value in this like which products do you place next to each other in order to make them appealing for the consumer to try on and buy. But there's another aspect to that. And this aspect actually covers how many units of which specific product 
shall be put on the sales floor in order to fulfill the consumer demand in the most efficient way. And globally speaking, this is a kind of optimization problem. So you should have enough units for your consumers to buy. You shouldn't have too many units in order to avoid overstock. And so this is, when you look at it, quite a detailed and quite complex um, optimization problem. And digging a little bit down and looking into what yeah, information or what considerations go into the planogram quickly reveal um, why this is so complex. Exactly. So if you wanted to create your first planogram for your store, then at first you would think that, okay, um, there are not that many rules to, to consider, not that many factors, because you just have to put articles on the sales floor. But if you think about, for example, merchandising rules, meaning that you always have to have a stack of five, for example, t-shirts on your sales floor from in the sizes XS to XL, um, or there are certain capacity limitations. So the sales floor can only um, carry a certain number of products because the, uh, of the limited capacity. Um, and uh, you might also want to consider uh, sales data, so previous sales data, if you know that certain products um, sell quite well, uh, then you might want to put more of those on the sales floor. And th those are just a few of the different factors that you can consider and that we actually also consider at Detego um, for creating these planograms. But there are many, many more to consider. And that is only the beginning when you think about planograms, because these planograms have to be created for each store individually and not even for each store, but actually for each article that you want to put on the sales floor. And they also have to be renewed for each new season. So whenever you have new articles, then you have to renew the whole planogram. Um, and that brings the complexity quite to a different level of creating these planograms. Exactly. So most of the, the customers that we are speaking to, they maintain a merchandise department who is in charge for actually yeah, creating and maintaining planograms. And depending on the number of stores and the product range, so the number of articles, this very quickly becomes a very, very big task. And it's very time consuming because in the end, you have humans sitting there and trying to create an optimal distribution of product across the stores. And thinking about this complexity and also the, the efforts that go into that, we feel very strongly that this is an optimum candidate to apply machine learning and artificial intelligence in order to first create planograms like an initial proposal but then also adapt them over time because things change obviously during a season so people's taste change the weather changes all these kind of things that can be used to kind of update the planogram in order to meet the demand in the most optimal way so stepping back imagine you're starting as an intern in yeah in a fashion retail um, company and your boss gives you the first task to create a planogram. So I don't know for a specific pullover in, in this case. So the task is specifically create an ideal distribution so that we can make sure all our products are represented on the sales floor in the optimal way. Then obviously you as a ambitious young intern would think how hard can it be? And you come up with the first great proposal, which is we simply put all the sizes out there. And while this might work and might be a certain baseline, it is most certainly not the optimal configuration. So when we think about size distributions, like the average male and the average female has a certain size, we have the size medium that should cover that. Um, it might well be that a distribution that looks a little bit different, so not just having quantity one of each um, size on the sales floor, but maybe um, some different quantities is a very valid consideration. And the question is how to define the optimal quantities there. And from a functional perspective, the question is, can we do better? And yes, we believe we can do better. And there are two basic mechanisms that we have implemented in our software. And this covers first the initial creation of a planogram, and then also the update throughout, or throughout the season. And Simon will give us a little bit more insight in, into that. Exactly. So um, for the initial planogram, the idea is to generate kind of like a first outline, a first plan based on few input parameters, meaning, for example, different attributes of articles. Um, 
And the initial planogram has also be adapted to different store configurations. So when you think about a retail store, you might want to have a different number of articles on the sales floor and, for example, um, in factory outlets or for showrooms. And one thing that's also very important uh, for us at Detego is that um, we always have this human in the loop feedback cycle, meaning that even if we create this initial planogram, um, there is always the possibility to have someone to manually tune and adjust um, our suggestions for these planograms. And the second step is then the ongoing adjustments. So we start with the initial planogram and then we um, have these ongoing adjustments, which we do on based on continuous measurements. And um, these measurements are taken from or are actually also enhanced uh, using controlled experiments. And again, with the ongoing adjustments, we also have this human in the loop where we can again manually, if necessary, tune and adjust these uh, planograms. Okay, so maybe Simon, you can give us a little bit more detail on especially this initial planogram and creation. I think this is maybe the hardest task. So if we would go back to the, the task of the intern um, to create this initial planogram, so maybe you give a little bit detail how the software actually does it. Oh, okay. Um, so essentially, uh, let's assume we start with the same article that you've shown before, and uh, we want to create a planogram for, let's say, a retail store and a showroom. So one thing that we would do is uh, we would actually um, look at different attributes of this specific article. We would look at, for example, the um, historic sales data of this and similar articles, and using these kinds of information and many, many more, um, we will create kind of like the initial planogram as depicted um, in the slides. So for example, for retail store, we would see that, okay, in certain stores, the sizes M and L sell way better than the sizes X, S, S, and so on, um, which is why we have this, or which is why our system would suggest this configuration for this specific article. Um, if we, on the other hand, would uh, do such an uh, initial planogram for a showroom uh, where it's more about the looks and feels of the store um, and to present the articles in the best way, then maybe the configuration that uh, you've shown before is actually already quite good. So the intern in, indeed did a good job for the showroom configuration. <laughs> Most likely. Um, once we have these initial planograms, uh, we can actually easily roll them out to all the stores that use our software. And we have the store managers and store personnel um, using our software and getting uh, advices on which articles to put on the sales floor um, using uh, our handhelds. So when you say this initial generation, so it, it seems like this is the kind of the first step at, at the problem. Um, I think it's important to put that in perspective because most of the retailers that we have been talking to try to find the ideal and perfect um, configuration for each and every store at the first attempt. And we are a strong believer that things change so dynamically that I think this perfectly um, yeah, introduces the second step that we have implemented. So indeed the first um, initial planogram is kind of the first attempt, but then it's very important to tune and adjust as the season continues. And I think a lot of value goes into that, and we don't have to do the, we don't have to be perfect on on the first attempt, but we will tune and adjust over over time. Yeah. So um, if we if we look at the slide for the ongoing adjustments, so um, if we again assume that we start with this um, retail configuration of a planogram where we have the sizes M and L um, as the most represented on our sales floor, then we feed that information in our planogram engine and using several different um, attributes and, and information that we can actually gather using RFID technology, such as transactions or dwell times, or also, that's also very important, the replenishment performance, we can actually fine tune and adjust these planograms so that we get a different distribution which better fits the actual demand in a specific store. So for example, in, in this case, um, we see that instead of putting out three um, articles of size M, we only put two on the sales floor, but we increase the XL articles um, from by one. 
yeah, from two to three. So um, basically, um, yeah, adjusting. So we keep the number of articles the same, but just adjust which ones to actually put on the sales floor. And doing controlled experiments, um, we can actually also further fine tune these um, planograms. Exactly. So the, the idea of a controlled experiment is more or less, how can we estimate the actual demand that consumers are having? So again, you have this initial proposal that might work well, but I think that the key question at, at some point is, um, what is the potential of a particular article and a particular color and size? So the task at hand essentially is, um, how many units can you sell in between two replenishment cycles? So for example, you put out two of size um, yeah, medium. The question is, could we sell three or even more um, if they were there? And for this reason, we perform kind of controlled experiments in different stores um, to kind of estimate and push a little bit the boundaries of how many products could you sell in a specific time frame, if you will. And these, or the results of, of these um, experiments are then being pushed back into our planogram engine to continuously adapt and then try to find the, the optimal configuration. And looking at a kind of simplified example, it's exactly as, as, as described earlier. So starting from this initial distribution, at some point we simply and really randomly try, okay, now let's put out a third of XL of a specific product. And then we look at the transactions. So are people actually buying three or do we stick at the two? And based on that, we can make a decision. Okay, that makes sense. And if we have enough feedback from enough stores that this configuration is better than, than the earlier one, then we keep it and adjust the planogram over time. And using this, this mechanism, we run hundreds and thousands of experiments every day in order to optimize the distribution, taking into account the transactions that the Simon has alluded to earlier, and really trying to optimize and tune as time goes by. As I said, seasons change, people's taste change, very trivial things can influence that. And I think it's very important that the system is dynamic enough to learn what's, what's going on out there in order to have the optimum fulfillment of the demand that the consumers are raising. So putting all these, these mechanisms again into perspective, the two key steps are to first create a kind of initial proposal for a planogram that needn't be perfect. It needs to be a first cut, a first step at the problem, and then really tune and adjust over time to meet consumers' demand. Of course, the shorter seasons get, the more dynamic things we are looking at, the more challenging the problem is. But the good thing is with a good variety of products and a, a, a yeah, large store chain, you can run enough experiments to really optimize and tune the things. So summarizing that, there are a couple of key factors that I want you to take away from this webinar. Some of them you would, of course, already know. And obviously, cre creating planograms is a tedious task. So we've seen customers having a lot of people sitting there trying to come up with the optimal configuration. And the complexity really comes from you have a large number of stores, you have a large number of articles, you have different seasons, and how do you apply what you've learned from last season to next season? All these kind of things make this a very challenging and time-consuming task. So from our perspective, this is a problem where artificial intelligence and machine learning um, algorithms are really perfectly suited to assist in the problem. Again, keeping the human in the loop as a kind of supervision absolutely makes sense. And this is why we also put functionality in our product to really help you by first creating a proposal and then let you look at it and optimize it. And again, the two steps of being able to preparing an initial proposal and then optimize it over time are the two key factors and the two key functionalities that AI can really make a difference with and can help retailers to be more successful with. So that was it for today. Thanks for your time. Thanks for checking in to this webinar. Hope it was useful for you and looking forward to see you next time. Thanks, Simon, and see you soon. Thank you.